Hello, my content area is gonna be about the ecosystem for fifth grade. It is a multi-day lesson. Um, the lessons that we will be going over is the ecosystems along with the interaction it has with our food web. So this is actually day two of our lesson that I'm gonna be teaching. So I wanted to give you kind of a refresher or what the students would have learned on the first day. So the first day we would have been creating a word wall. Um, and this would be displayed in very visual for the students to be able to see. And they would this would be left up through the whole lesson so they could use it as a reference. So they would kind of look like this, obviously bigger and up on the bulletin board, but they would be the terms that the students would be using. So we have like organism, pollution, producer, the food web, habitat, ecosystem, the environment, um, and then there would also be the herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, and decomposer. The one thing that I want to do with my word wall is they will have um, one that would look like this with the definition and then just the word itself. They will both have the same picture. So for those students that may um, be our English learner students or need more of that visual, they could match up the pictures. So like for the herbivore, I would could have a picture of a rabbit eating some lettuce to represent that they are plant eating lettuce or plant eating animals. So that would be our word wall. And that would lead us into our activity for the first day, which is our interactive food web. They would come with task cards like this. Um, the idea is we would either be doing this in our classroom or perhaps a small gym because the kids are actually gonna be part of the food web. They're gonna have strings that you know um, connect each other. So like if I they get a sparrow and then the card would say exactly what the sparrow is. I am a sparrow, I eat grasshoppers and seed and I am eaten by snakes, hawks and foxes. So whoever had the sparrow card then we would take the string and link into the snake. And this would go on. The idea or the concept behind this is that students can see how everything is linked together. We always think about the food chain from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. And we don't realize how much is linked together in the food web. And I really want students to understand this. And also, what would happen if we took away something from the food web? Um, how much that could impact if we took away, let's say, grass. What would that impact up top of the food chain? Or if something disappeared from the top of the food chain or the top of the food web, how can that disrupt the whole ecosystem? So that was one of the ideas with the interactive food web. Okay, so that would lead us into our day two. Um, the day two lesson for, to begin with would go over a quick refresher of the word wall which would be matching so they can look at the terms and then i would lead in with my question of the day that i would ask them if they could tell me students what the difference is or what they think a mosquito is if they think a mosquito would be a herbivore a carnivore an omnivore or what do they think and i would give them time to actually stop and really think about it without raising their hands. And I would have them actually write down their answer. I really want this to be a cooperative learning experience for the students. So we are gonna be doing a lot of discussing and a lot of um, questioning and exploring the different ecosystems and how they interact with the food web. Okay, so after we have discussed that, we are gonna lead into our centers for the day. And that is um, today's lessons. My ultimate goal would be able to have a para, a parent, or maybe another teacher that would have time to come in and help me with um, the projects. But two of the centers are actually gonna be more independent. Um, and then the last center that I will be demonstrating today is going to be the project. So at center one, they are going to be creating, there's some worksheets, but they are going to be creating a flip book that looks like this. And then underneath are the definitions, okay? Again, the students can use the references, 
of the word wall, but on each of the centers, I am going to have the directions and a completed copy of what they will be doing. And before we even start the centers, I'm gonna go from each center to show the kids exactly what they're gonna be doing. Okay, so this is one of the things that center one, the first thing that I want them to complete because they will be turning this in. Then they have some other little fun activities at that center. They can create their little food pyramid to kind of show them the connections. They also can mess around or play with this. Um, there's little task cards and they could put them in the different slots. I will have this on the table as well. Um, it is the vocabulary, so all the terms that they are gonna be using, so the students can also use that as a reference. There is the vocab also matching, okay? So that is center number one. At center number two, the students are gonna use of their little bit of their creativity. And this is where the art standard would kind of come into play. They are going to create their own animal or species or even plant. Then they will have a list of items that they have to tell about that animal. So they will have poster board, markers, crayons, everything like that. They'll work as a group um, to create their own animal. Then they have to list if it's, um, is it a predator, is it a prey? Um, what type of habitat, what does it eat? Um, and there will be, like I said, there'll be a list of everything on the table that they have to complete. Once we are all done with our centers, the students will actually be completing, um, once they have completed, they will actually be presenting their animals to their classmates. So there will play into another English ELA standard with the um, speaking and the presenting. So I'm very, would, much be looking forward to what kind of creatures they would come up with. Um, center three is our project. So for center one and for center two, I want to have a backup plan. If they would get done earlier, they could continue on to work on their creature or their animal that they're creating. I'm also going to have up on the projector some live um, feed of animals that are in their habitat. So like one is the Decora eagles that you can see in their nesting and see what they're doing. So that would be displayed for the kids to be able to um, watch as they're waiting for the rotation group, or they can go back and they can play again with the interactive cards with the food web. So the idea would be that we would have about 20 minutes at each of the rotations. Um, I don't want our kids to be overwhelmed about worrying about finishing either the creature or their animal that they're creating or even the flipboard. So, or the flipbook. Say it's like they need more time. I'm going to allow more time. And I did day number three as a finish up wrap up time. But what I would like to teach today is the final project center number three that I would be at. And I actually have my student here with me that is gonna help me with this project. Okay, so you just came from center number one where you went over some of your terms again, right? Yeah. Okay, so what did you learn? So like what is one of the herbivores? What would be a herbivore? Uh, you mean what type of animal yeah. or, okay. An animal that is a herbivore would just eat plants. Great, okay. And what would be a carnivore? Carnivore would just be a meat eater. Okay, so what would happen when we talked about our food web and everything else, what would happen if all of a sudden the grass didn't grow? Could that affect us? Uh, well, it counts on which food web or food chain you're talking about, but almost every single one, it would affect about everything. Okay, so what kind of animals might it affect us if um, if the grass didn't grow? Okay, if there's no grass in the world, well, you can say goodbye to a lot of the herbivores, which may be cows, and so there's no milk, no like hamburgers and that type of stuff, and any other animal that eats grass, the animals that eat them will probably go extinct. Right, so even the smallest little thing in our ecosystem or on that food web could mm -hmm. have a affect if something happens to go away, correct? Okay, good. So we 
you've kind of, you did center number one already, so now you're here for center number two. Yeah. We are going to create, if you look at your worksheet here, it is called a life in a bottle, okay? Or if you look at that, Yep, that's the page that you're going to need because you're going to be observing these for at least seven days. So these are actually called a terrarium. So it's like your own little ecosystem in a bottle, okay? Some terrariums are closed, like yours is going to be, and some are open so they can allow like flies and bugs or you could even put bugs in it to kind of see how the life grows, okay? But we are going to do it this way and then we're going to put it in the sun and see how it grows throughout the next seven days. Okay, so you'll be making observations. What kind of observations do you think you might see in your terrarium? Well, so like if you planted seeds and stuff, mm -hmm. well, very soon, count on what type of seed, but they'll probably you'll maybe start seeing some grass or green or something. And you might start seeing some things growing on the edges of the bottle. Sure. Okay. So let's get right into the project. Um, one of the things that I'm going to make sure when we do our project is I'm going to have everything out for the students. They do need two liter bottles that are going to be have to be cut. So I'm going to have these already out and ready to go. Okay, Max. What does it say on our first direction? Um, this one? Yep, or yes. In this activity, you're going to build a simple terrarium, which is really a mini ecosystem in a bottle. During your investigation, you'll, you will be able to control different factors to see how they impact different organisms living in your ecosystem. Great. Okay, so now the first thing that we are going to do, so we already decided this is our little ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. We have to take your first bottle, so that is the shorter one, and it says that you need to fill it with about seven and a half centimeters of moist garden top soil. Why do you think it has to be moist? Because if we're putting plants in there, plants need water. Good. Okay. So go ahead and, yep. Oh, well. That's okay. Good job. Okay. All right. So we got that in there, right? Okay. Good. All right. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to sprinkle one fourth cup of wild bird seed. Okay. Even though birds eat it, what do you think these are that birds eat? Are th they're seeds, right? They can grow? Yes. Good. Okay. So go ahead and pour your one fourth cup of bird seed. I don't know where that is. That's okay. So if you look on here, your one fourth cup line is about right here. So we'll just pour a little bit out. I couldn't see the lines. Okay. Okay. Good. And then go ahead and pour that in there. Awesome. All right. So now this kind of represents the, uh, the food, right? Mm -hmm. That people not people, um, that birds might want to eat as well, right? Yep. Okay. So then the next thing it says is to add another two and a half centimeters of topsoil, the rest of the soil. So you're going to take the rest of your soil and put it on the top. All of it? Yes, all of it. Great job. Okay, you kind of kind of pack it down. See how you can almost see the layers? There, good. Okay, now, what do you think is the next thing that we are going to need to make our ecosystem or to make those plants grow? Well, plants need dirt, water, and sunlight. We have sun, dirt, we need water. Good. So you got your water bottle right there, and it says here that you need to spray the top of the soil with water until it starts to form little puddles. Why do you think we need to form little puddles? Because we need enough water so that it will go all the way down. Good. And that yep. will still be extra. Yes, good. Okay. 
Okay. Awesome. So as you're doing this, we can think about all the animals that might take advantage of just something like this. What animals might take advantage of something like this? What are carnivores? Um, I don't know what you mean. Like would, if we are growing plants, right? Yep. Is this something our carnivores would eat? No. No. This okay. Would, this would probably be something good for herbivores like moose and stuff. Sure. But it still would affect the carnivores if we couldn't grow it, right? Yep. In our web? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So the next thing we are going to do is you're going to take this because this is in a closed aquarium. We are going to take this and close it up. So you're going to put that, and it actually fits on the inside. Oops. I'll hold it. Okay. Good. All right, awesome. So you have finished your aquarium. However, you have one question for today, okay? Now it says that you need to observe it from the side. What does it mean to observe something? Uh, to watch it you and see how and see what happens. Yes. So what do you see happening to the water that you sprayed on the top of the soil? Um, do you see anything? Well, you can start seeing it like dripping down slowly. Sure. If okay. you wait long enough, you'll probably see the seeds starting to get wet. What part of the environment do you think the water is representing? Um, the wetlands? Sure, like our water system, right? Our water cycle? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so the next part that you have to do is you actually have to place this in the windowsill. So you're going to place it in the windowsill and then we're going to observe it okay. for the next seven days to see what happens to this, to your own little ecosystem. Okay, mm -hmm. so go ahead and do that. Okay. So again, my goal would be that we would be creating those with the class. The kids would rotate through. I would hope to have, you know, at least maybe um, five to six kids in a center at a time so I can be able to do some more of those one-on-one -on -one questions with the kids. During my time, um, when the kids are pouring the stuff in to the um, bottles, I'm going to be able to um, take time and walk around to the other centers to see how the students are doing. But that is my teaching lesson. And like I said, for day three, we would continue on to finish up the centers. Um, they would be doing their classroom presentation of the animal that they had made. And we would be doing a summative assessment of um, turning in their work. It's gonna be a lot of graded participation um, and their aquarium or their terrarium wouldn't be graded necessarily until the very end. Um, and then I would be doing a fun little cahoot. So again, it's a really a cooperative learning experience that they can explore with science.